This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Cerebral Cinema and the WON Radio Network present to you Superwoman. Yes, Superwoman, the dynamic crime fighter. Superwoman, the champion of justice. Superwoman, who in truth is mild-mannered Chicago news reporter Emily Nesbacher. Buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Time now for Rocky Jordan, brought to you by Del Monte Foods, the brand preferred by more women than any other line of canned fruits and vegetables in the world. Not far from the Musk Sultan Hassan in Cairo stands the Cafe Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. The Café Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men, alive with the babble of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against the backdrop of antiquity. Del Monte presents Rocky Jordan and this week's story, Quest for Trenina. If you ever plan a trip to Cairo, take my tip and read up on a few things. How to keep off the streets during the Moazin's call. They're a devout people. How to leave your dogs at home. They don't like them. And most important of all, when you see a native woman, don't look the second time. Me, I learned a lot of things the hard way, and I never forgot them. Which goes to explain what I was up against that evening as I left a vegetable mart in the native quarter of South Cairo. I'd ordered a few items for delivery to my cafe and was making my way along a narrow street walled by an ancient abandoned dwelling toward the main thoroughfare. There was no place for a foreigner after dark, so I stepped it up. And about then, I heard it. Then I saw a young, beautiful native girl without the veil running wildly toward me. Coming fast close behind was a rough-bearded native with a scar on his right cheek. In another second, he had a hold of her, dragging her back. No! It was way too rough for my blood, so I started moving in. He clung to the struggling girl and turned to face me. Go your way, infidel. Now, let's all break it up, Buster. She wants my help. Oh, is the kelp so stupid? Remove your eyes from her now before they bring evil. Oh, sorry. Mashallah. That is better. Now the Inglisi will be gone. Just as soon as you explain who she is and what this is all about. I explain nothing. It is an affair of the family, no. an affair of my people. No, no, let me go, please. Silence, say nothing. Since when do your people go dragging girls through the streets? It is an affair not for one of your kind. It is of the family, I say. Fendi, please, take me from him, please. Back from the sight of this man. Hey, listen, you. Sir, the infidel persists. Ah. Come well equipped, don't you? It is the knife for such as you who lack wisdom. Yeah, maybe it doesn't impress me. Then it will be used quickly. And you will be picked up from the gutter as one who did not realize that the ways of the East are not those of the West. Well, Ingilazi? Uh, you can put the knife away. Uh, it is well. You will put you have seen of this family affair from your mind. Or else you will learn that for us, death comes cheaply. Lil Tak, no, Saida! No, in the name of Allah! So I just stood watching as he took her away, screaming and out of sight. The big trouble was that what the guide said was right. It wasn't my affair. Not here in Cairo. The best thing was to keep it that way. I kept telling myself that as I went back to my tambourine, as I tried to sleep that night, until I picked up the early edition of the Cairo Mail the next morning. Yeah, what the headlines didn't tell me, the picture below did. It was the face of the native girl. I read only a little way down, Tranina, daughter of Emil Falak Bey, reported missing, abduction feared, reward offered for information. Right away, I was in at my office phone, putting in a call for Captain Sam Sabaya, of the Cairo police. He wasn't there, so I knew where I'd find him, and I headed for the home of Falak Bay. It was a large white house in the spacious Sharia El Din. In front was Park Sabaya's black limousine, 
And at the gate, a couple of uniformed men, assisted by several house servants, were trying to hold back an excited crowd, claiming information and seeking the reward. I started pushing my way through. No one enters the home of Alec Day. Uh, well, I'm going in. Yeah, I warn you, sir. Oh, but she's in back from the gate. It is most difficult, Captain Sabaya. This man makes trouble. Oh, Jordan, Ahmed, let him enter the car. Your command, Captain. Ah, oh, sir. Thanks. Jordan, come over here by the fountain. And what brings you to this place, Jordan? Well, you know, it's important or I wouldn't be here, Sam. Please be brief. I have grave matters at hand. It's about the girl, Tranina. Uh, oh, come into the house, quickly. Yeah. In here, Jordan. Who comes now to my troubled house, Captain Sabaya? His name is Jordan Falak Bey. He says that he brings word of Tranina. But what would he, a foreigner, know of my daughter? Only what I saw, Falak Bey. Over near the native vegetable mart. A man dragging her away. No. It is not possible. Continue, Jordan. Uh, you are sure that she was the daughter of this man? She's the same that I saw in the papers this morning. You saw her dragged away, and what did you do? Nothing. Nothing, Jordan? What do you expect, Sam? She's a native girl. I understood it was a family affair, and that left me out. Uh, a family affair? Who would tell you this thing? The guy who was holding her. He made real sure I stayed out of it. Uh, please describe him. Oh, he had a lot of crooked teeth, heavy beard except for a knife scar from his chin through his right ear. Mm. Do you know who this could be, Falak Bey? I, I know of no such man. Jordan, can you be sure of this? Yeah, look right into his face. I'd recognize it anywhere. Sabaya Bey, can you not see that Jordan is like the others who come only for reward but know nothing? Let's get this straight, Falak Bey. I'm not here for money. Uh, just a moment, please. Now, exactly when did all this occur? Late yesterday evening. Jordan, you mean to tell me that you saw a girl abducted on the streets of Cairo many hours ago, and yet you wait until this minute to tell no, me? No, Sam, we've been over this before. You've made it clear the ways of the East aren't like mine, that native affairs are not my concern. Yes, I will confess that I have, Jordan. However... All it... right. Maybe I should have done something this time. Believe me, if I'd known who the girl was and that she was in real danger... I do not accuse you. Is there more to tell? No, that's everything. I'm in it now, Sam. I'll square it somehow. No, no, Jordan. I suggest that for your own safety, you now return to your tambourine and think no more of this. You know I can't do that. It is an affair for the police, Jordan. Uh, please, say no more. There is no truth in Jordan's story. Can you not see? If I like Bay, I quite understand how you feel. However, My I... My lovely Tranina. She whom I brought to womanhood, hoping that she would marry into good station and bring me joy. Now she is gone. Well, there's plenty we can do about this. I beg you, Captain, take him away. Let this man torment me no more. So I got out. I didn't blame Falak Bay so much for how he felt. Only myself now. I pushed my way through the crowd at the gate and up the Shari El Din. I walked along the busy street trying to figure my next move and what I could do about Tronina. All at once, I had company. A young, muscular fellow with a determined face who crowded in close. I have valuable jewels, Effendi. They must go for a quick price. They're not interested. Hala, Yatik. A precious diamonds, a bargain quickly made. If you would step to a quiet spot... No jewels, buddy. Now beat it. To dispose of them in Cairo would be dangerous for me, but you, an American, could get a fine price in Chicago or uh, New Orleans or perhaps St. Louis. Yeah. All right, I'll play along. Let's go. All right, this is far enough. Let's see the diamonds. There are no diamonds. Yeah, I didn't think so. I'll get to the point. I will ask you only one thing, Mr. Jordan. You know a lot already. My name and where I'm from. Oh, many know of you, Mr. Jordan. I had only to inquire. Right, tell me some more, including the name. It is Gerard, though not important. Then what is? I would learn what you know of Tranini. Ask a certain guy with crooked teeth and a split ear. This is no time for a jest, Mr. Jordan. All right, Gerard. Get it out in the open. Why all the secrecy? It is best for the present that I not be seen with you. Why? Just where do you fit in? I cannot tell you. As yet, I do not know of your part in this affair or how you came by what you say you know. At the moment, my interest is only in Tranine. You got some ideas what happened to her? It is possible that I have. Speak now, Mr. Jordan. Tell me what you know and we will go in peace. And if I don't, what then? You ask for threats but I give none. Only rest assured that I will stop at nothing. Think of this, Mr. Jordan. Nothing. Gerard suddenly turned and walked toward the street without looking back. I gave him just enough lead, and as he turned onto the Shari El Din, I started after him, figuring to do a tailing job. 
What I'd seen in his eyes made me sure that he meant what he said, not stopping at nothing. I had a stake in Fernina's welfare now, and Gerard was a good place to begin. As I stepped into the street, I glanced around for the sight of Gerard, and I didn't go any farther. Sandstone rock sprayed my face as the bullet struck the wall not two inches away. I dived back rolling. There I hugged the dirt of the alley, waiting for it to come again. Nothing happened. I got up, moved carefully along the wall, back to the street. The shots had scattered the passers-by, but now they were returning, crowding in to see what had happened, chattering and pushing in. There was a sea of faces, but nowhere the face I wanted. Gerard was gone. Del Monte Foods is presenting tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. Question. What is the zestiest, liveliest catsup that ever pepped up a meal? Answer. Del Monte catsup, of course. There's nothing like it for hearty, satisfying flavor. And the big secret of that flavor is pineapple vinegar. Take the very best plump, red, vine-ripened tomatoes, the kind Del Monte uses, add specially ground spices and herbs, blend them all together with pineapple vinegar, and what do you have? Why, Del Monte catsup. A catsup that just can't be topped for flavor. A catsup that's livelier, zestier, and more satisfying. You see, pineapple vinegar coaxes all the best flavor from the other ingredients. Catsup experts agree, the finer the vinegar, the better the catsup flavor. And pineapple vinegar is an exceptionally fine vinegar. Only Del Monte makes it. Only Del Monte has it. Del Monte catsup is my standby. It brings out the flavor of plain foods like no other catsup you ever tried. Look for Del Monte catsup at your grocer's. We know you'll like it. Try it soon, and before long, you'll join other satisfied users in saying... Del Monte catsup is my favorite. It has such marvelous flavor. And now we take you back to Cairo, and tonight's Rocky Jordan story, Quest for Trinina. Call it what you will, good sense or bad judgment. I watched the abduction of the lovely Trinina without lifting a finger. It looked like a family affair, and that's something foreigners like me keep out of. Now Trinina was gone, and plenty of people were looking for her, including a determined young guy named Gerard. And this time, it had to take more than some gunshots thrown my way to keep me out of it. My number one lead was the character who had dragged her away. Easy to remember for the knife scar from his chin through his right ear. So I threw a few piastres around for some new leads, Spent the rest of the day running down men with split ears. I found plenty of them, but not the one I wanted. It was well after dark when I finally walked back toward my tambourine. And just as I got to the door, a little one-eyed character studied his faded fez in my face. A hasty word with you, Effendi. I make it quick, Buster. I would reveal something most interesting, uh, but for a small fee. Uh, tell me all about it. Uh, but uh, the bargain, Effendi. All right, here. Yeah. My last three piastres. Oh, it is so little. But if you truly say that there is no more... There's more when I get the information. Now, come on, hurry it up. Hey, this way, sir. Hey, quickly. Yeah, where are we going? Come, follow, please. I will show you. He led me through the winding streets, skirting the Solomon Pasha Square, and then off into the native quarter. From there on, I knew anything could happen, and I was ready for it. In front of a building that should have been condemned before Napoleon took Egypt, the little guy stopped, beckoned me, and went in. He took me up some creaking steps... At the top, he pointed to a door, hesitated only long enough for me to throw him another coin, and then he was gone. I tried the door. It opened. Nothing happened, so I moved into the darkness inside, feeling for a light switch. I couldn't find one, so I slid along the wall till I reached the window. I tugged on a battered shade, and it did the rest. The moonlight came in, and that's when I found the man with a scar and a split ear. He was sprawled on the floor wasn't pleasant to look at. From the looks of the room, there hadn't been much of a fight. He'd gotten the knife from behind. I scratched around without finding anything more, and I was back down the steps and out of the native quarter the quickest way. In another couple of minutes, I had Sabaya on the phone. Jordan, I've been calling your tambourine. Where have you been? Oh, I'll write you a memo, Sam. Now listen. I trust you are well, Jordan. Did you think different? I could not be sure in the light of what I have found. 
Well, keep it up, Sam. Get to the point. Regarding the man whom you described as the abductor of Tanina, would you say he is of medium height, black beard, crooked teeth, green eyes, and a scar on his right cheek? Yeah, that's the guy. Who is he? His name is Bantar. He is known as a vicious man, one who kills for a price and without mercy. Are you sure? That, Jordan, is the man you allowed to escape with the daughter of Halak Bey. A family affair indeed. All right, Sam, sure. What about the girl? I will be quite frank with you. We have no trace of her. Mm, thanks. Incidentally, why did you call me? Well, it's about Bantar. You can find him now. What? I, I do not understand. Hunt up an old place at the corner of Gamma and Haran. Room 201. He's all yours. A moment, Jordan. What are you trying to tell me? Don't get excited, Sam. He won't go away. Well, I'd found Bantar, but there was still Tronina. And I had nothing. Nothing except Gerard. He had some ideas, but it was time he told me. So I began again. There was a chance that Falak Bey might know of him. So I went back to the white mansion on the Shari Erdin and in through the court. This time, nobody at all was around to stop me. The house was dark, but I kept rapping the big knocker, and finally the door was open. I was greeted by Falak Bey himself. Who disturbs the sorrow of my house? It's Jordan. I've got to see you for a minute. Oh, my good Fendi Jordan. A moment. I will come into the court with you. I'm sorry to bother you, Falak Bey, but... No, no, it is good that you came. Now, before Allah, I can ask your forgiveness. For what? When this morning you described to me the man who took my daughter, I was beside myself with anxiety and did not believe. You believe me now? Yes. Now the Sabaya Bey has told me that there truly is such a man. What you said was true. Tronina is in the hands of Bantar, the killer. No, not anymore, she isn't. Mr. Jordan, what do you mean? Bantar's dead. <gasps> dead? I just saw him. Somebody's knife did it. So, now what more hope can there be? My daughter is no more. But you can't be sure of that, Falak Bey. Please, no. You try only to soften my despair. It is of no avail. You have done enough now, my good defendant. Listen... Does the name Gerard mean anything to you? Gerard? Young guy. Pretty husky. Stubborn. So, it is the troublemaker again. Why do you ask of him? Well, he's plenty anxious to know what I saw. Falak Bey, we may not have much time. You've got to tell me about him. He is only the rash youth who chanced to see my daughter on the streets. Quickly, he came to me asking for her hand in marriage. Mm -hmm. He was not for her. He wanted only her wealth. Repeatedly, I drove him from my door. Maybe he had something to do with her abduction. I... It is indeed possible. And there's a chance he'll come for you next. Mr. Jordan, I am an old man. My welfare is nothing. Well, I've got to find Gerard quick. Please, no, it is not right that you, not of my people, should endanger your life. Well, don't worry about me. Go in peace now, my Effendi. I return now into my house, alone. Tronina was all I had. There are not even relatives to mourn with me in my grief. Allah be with you. Went back out through the court and the gate and took a few steps down the walk. There, for some reason, I hesitated. I'd seen fear as well as grief in Falak Bey's eyes. Right then, I didn't blame him. But something wasn't straight. I stood looking back, and that's when I saw a silent figure crawl from a low window at the side toward the back of the house. I held it till he hit the ground, and then I was after him. He saw me coming too late and whirled away just as I hit him head on. He went down with the wind knocked out of him. I reached inside his coat, found a knife, and... Brought it out with a fistful of papers, threw them away, and I began to drag him up. He came too fast. His open hand caught me right across the ear. Bells began ringing, so we had it out toe-to-toe. -to -toe. This was sort of out of his line, and all at once he went down again. All right, get up, Gerard. Come on, get up. I need no help. What are you doing in that house? I, I, I told you that I would stop at nothing. Yeah, I believe that much. I will only ask you again what you know of Tranini. Cut it, Gerard. It's too late. I'm asking now. I still know nothing of you, Mr. Jordan. I, I... Who is there? Answer at once. Falak Bay. Look who I caught crawling out your window. Gerard, in my house. I warned you'd be around. It was not my purpose to harm the Falak Bay. Yeah, uh, I suppose you clear it up. You had a lot of ideas about what happened to Trinina. Let's hear them. I will speak no more to either of you. Do with me what you will. Well, that was all for Gerard. From then on, he closed up tighter than the cap on a bottle of Coke. I sat him down on a bench in the court while Falak Bay called headquarters. 
The noise had roused the neighborhood, and they crowded around as Sabai and his men showed up. I explained all that had happened, promised to be down to see him later, then they took Gerard away. Colic Bay said goodnight, begged the people to return to their beds, and went back alone into the house. I turned to leave, and the crowd faded away, all but one kindly-faced Egyptian at the gate. <sighs> it is most sad, is it not? Yeah. The most noble Falak Bey, the man of many troubles, alone in his house of sorrow. Huh? Sure tough. And no one to mourn with him for the lovely Tranina. She whom he loved as his own. I went on down the street then, still trying to fit everything together. Maybe Sam would get more out of Gerard, but there was still Tranina. I was wondering if Falak Bay was right about it being too late, and if not, what could be done? When all at once it sunk in, what I'd just been told. Things were suddenly falling into place, and I was running back the way I'd come. As I approached the big white house, I remembered something else, and I hurried around to the side. The papers I'd pulled out of Gerard's pocket were still scattered around. I picked them up. A couple of matches later, I'd found out everything I wanted. Now there wasn't a second to lose. I got around to the window Gerard had used. I climbed in. I'd just cut on a light when I saw Falak Bay coming down the stairs from the balcony to the upper quarters. I met him halfway. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan, what does this mean? We both know, Falak. Get out of my way. Oh, I will not. You will not desecrate my house. Back in for them. Oh, what are you scared of? It is not fear. Maybe it's what I'll find up here, huh? The upper floors are for no man. Do not enter the door. Yeah, I'm going in. I command you, do not enter. There she was, Tranina, struggling wildly at the bonds which held her. Her mouth gagged, her eyes holding stark terror. I turned and saw Falak fumbling in his pocket for a knife or a gun. I swung and I drove him back with all I had. He staggered through the door, hit the balcony rail and went over. And then it was silent. I was back then at Trinina's side, loosening the bonds and taking the gag from her mouth and trying to calm her fears. He was going to kill me. I know not why, but he was going to kill Easy, me. Easy, Tranina. You're free now. Everything's all right. Oh, please, take me away. Take me away from this house. I beg I you. I will, Tranina. Get your breath now, and I will. You you are the young lady who, who saw them taking me from the streets. That's right. Took me a long time to catch on. And, and you are the only one who found that I was here? <laughs> you sound a little disappointed. But no, Effendi. I thank you for my life, but was there none other? Tell me his name. It is Gerard. I thought so. Gerard did everything he could, Trinina. Come on. We'll go to him. In just a moment, Rocky Jordan returns to conclude tonight's story. Fresh tasting, natural tasting, and refreshing. That's just what tomato juice should be. And it's just exactly what Del Monte tomato juice is. Fresh tasting, natural tasting, and refreshing. To start the day right in the morning, for a pick-me-up any time during the day, or as a perfect mealtime appetizer, there's nothing like a chilled glass of Del Monte tomato juice. That rich tomato flavor, tasting just as fresh and natural as a tomato picked right off the vine, really hits the spot. Yes, for real satisfaction, there's nothing like a chilled glass of Del Monte tomato juice. Try it. With your first sip, you'll think, Hey, this is good. Del Monte tomato juice is fresh tasting. And with the second sip, you'll say, <clears throat> Mighty good. Del Monte tomato juice is natural tasting. Then you'll drink it down because... It really hits the spot. Del Monte tomato juice is so refreshing. Remember, for fresh, natural, refreshing tomato flavor, it's Del Monte tomato juice every time. Keep several cans handy in the refrigerator. Now back to Rocky Jordan and the conclusion of tonight's story. Well, one quick look told me that Follick Bay was now only a problem for the coroner. Not long after that, I created something of a sensation when I walked into headquarters with Trinina. Gerard was still under a technical charge of housebreaking, but he was released from his cell and brought to the office where Trinina, Sam, and I waited. She was quickly in his arms. Gerard, oh, darling. Trinina, 
Praise Allah, you are safe and well. And you, Gerard, what of you? Oh, have no fear for me or us. Soon I will return to your side forever. Gerard. <clears throat> no, now, if I may have your attention, we will clear up a few matters. Uh, uh, Jordan. Yeah, it looks like Gerard was way ahead of us, Sam. He suspected things weren't right with Follock Bay, and he entered his house to prove it. These uh, documents he found there told everything. Mm. For one thing, Trinina was only Follock's stepdaughter. One of the neighbors had told me as much. Mm-hmm. Is this true, Miss Trinina? Oh, my most humble pardon, Zabaya Bay. Did you speak? Did I? Did, uh, <clears throat> I'll continue, Jordan. Well, Trinina inherited a sizable fortune through her mother, who is now dead. Naturally, Follock was named as her guardian and the executor of her estate. Mm. What she didn't know was that Follock had misused her money, business ventures and so on. Mm. And her fortune was gone. Now he didn't dare let her marry or come of age when she would surely demand an accounting. Well, Follock had made a big speech about how he'd wanted Trinina to marry... I wondered then why he hadn't matched her up long ago. She must be nearly 21. Oh, just a moment, please. Miss Trinina, mm? when is your 21st birthday? Oh, why, it's on the morrow. I had forgotten. My sweet, I will buy you a gift of the purest silver. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, uh, go on, Jordan. Well, you see, Sam, he had to act quick. He hired Bantar to take her out and kill her. But Bantar fumbled the job. That's when I saw them last evening and... He hesitated and hit her. Mm. In the meantime, Falak was putting on a big act about her disappearance. But she was in Falak Bay's house when you found her. Oh, sure. When Bantar learned I was passing around his description, he got smart and after dark tonight, secreted her back to Falak's house and dumped her right in his lap. I see. So the Bay was posed with a problem. What to do with her now that she realized what was happening? Mm -hmm. First, he tied up Trinina in a room and went after Bantar, both through anger and the fear of what Bantar knew. He killed him. It is now quite clear why the Bay wished that no one enter his house, not even professional mourners. It appeared strange that he had sent even the servants away. Yeah. Lucky I get back there in time. Indeed it is. Uh, Trenina, are you aware that you are without funds? That you now have nothing? But do I not have Gerard? I have everything, Sabaya Bay. Gerard, do you still wish to take Trenina... As wife. But of course. With my own hands, I will slave for her. I will give her all the good things in life. That is as it should be. Gerard, my husband to be. Tranine, my sweet. You see, Jordan, people do not always marry for money. Sometimes they marry for love. For the finest in tomato flavor, enjoy the whole family of Del Monte tomato products. Del Monte catsup and chili sauce. Del Monte tomato sauce and canned tomatoes. And Del Monte tomato juice. Remember, buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Rocky Jordan, written by Gomer Cool and Larry Roman, stars Jack Moyles in the title role with Jane Novello as Sam Sabaya, and is produced and directed by Cliff Howell, with original music composed and conducted by Richard Arunt. Remember, you have a date next week at the Cafe Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. Same time, same station. And the story is The Diorite Bowl. <laughs> There is nothing more inviting, no cool dessert so flavorful as Del Monte crushed pineapple heaped generously over your favorite ice cream or sherbet. Del Monte crushed pineapple, the brand that always puts flavor first. Now, before we sign off, we want to remind you this year, more than ever before, your local community chest needs your support. Give generously. Everybody benefits when everybody gives. Larry Thor speaking. Rocky Jordan is presented over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.